So we went through um, um, creating a class uh, for an example for to, to uh, uh, kind of go through what we have dealt with with constructors and destructors last time. And we said, let's create a class called str so the str class can replace the string thingy for us. And we started developing it towards the goal that it's, it can replace the string. Right now, it looks very ugly because for every single thing you have to call a function for. Um, soon, we're going to replace all that. But we have to first make sure that this actually works properly uh, for the things that we want. And then we're going to, with a very slight little modification, you will see that everything is going to work perfectly. Remember that I told you that we have uh, three different classes for the output. It's not only C out. We have C out, C log, and C error, right? This print of ours can only print on C out, correct? That's what it does. What can I do to make it capable to print on other objects too? If I want to print on C log, I want to be able to. If I want to print on C error, I want to be able to, right? We know that C out, C log, and C error, they are all O streams, right? They're like three different instances of the same class, right? So we can actually fix that thing. First of all, anybody wants me to go quickly review, the, review what we have done over here? Oh, lots of people are doing this. So, OK, so let's, let's go through it and quickly <laughs> uh, let's, let's uh, go through it and actually review it. So we wanted to replace the, the, uh, uh, the, the string array in C language and simulate something that can uh, be used like a regular variable. So we can treat series of characters back to back as a single entity instead of dealing with an array and calling a function for concatenating or copying or comparing. And uh, we came up with this. We said that we are going to create a class. We call it str. You chose the name. Good morning. We are going to uh, create a class in uh, uh, encapsulate all the dirty business of working with st strings, uh, with strings, uh, dirty business with all the strings inside this class so the user doesn't have to deal with this. When I say user, I mean who? Client, programmer? Ah, another program. That's right. Another program. So remember, when you are creating things like that, your user is not the end user. Your user is another programmer writing C++ code. You're essentially writing a library. Okay? So you have to be aware of that. The target audience is different now. It's not the end user. It's another programmer. Okay? So it's not the client. It's literally another programmer like you. So we don't want them to get involved with all the dirty business of working with. So to do that, we said we're going to put all the essence of a C string in here, which starts with uh, uh, the uh, character pointer that holds the data. And then we're going to create a constructor that could just build an empty one, uh, which we set the mdata to null. Or we can create we can create a constructor that builds an empty one. So by the way, what was the name of this area? We call this initialization area and we said it's not a real thing it's a made-up name I came up with right so so we can actually initialize all the properties of the string anything that a string has and is we can pro we can actually put it in here now SDR SDR I can I want to be able to actually create the, this the 
the, the string that I have using an already existing data. Obviously, I'm going to initialize to follow the rule of keeping unused pointers to null. And then I'm going to check to see if the incoming data is actually something that we have. I'm going to allocate and copy the data into it right away. Then we said, what if I want to have a limited size? I don't want to just copy whatever the thing has. If it's like 9,000 characters, I only want the first 80. What can I do? We said, OK, no problem. We can actually create a third constructor that accepts two arguments. Now, this one accepts the data and the length it wants to actually set it. We left the M data over here to distinguish between what is initialization and what is setting. In this scenario, at line 13, M data is being set, which means before the constructor is uh, called when the object is created, data will hold garbage. And after the garbage, it will be overwritten by well, null. No. Then I'm going to check to see if the data is uh, valid. Then I'm going to allocate and copy up to certain length. So we create a new allocate and copy for that. When we were dealing with the other class, the other class suggested that it's a good idea to have allocate and copy do all the things that it's supposed to do, which means when we were writing allocate and copy over there, we said that if you are allocating something into the destination pointer in any cases with size or without size, you cannot allocate over a destination that already has memory, right? It is impossible. And since we are following the rule of setting the unused pointer to null, we can comfortably and freely delete the destination here before we do anything. So in case somebody just uses the allocate and copy and they have some memory in there, it's not going to have memory leak. It's going to remove it, then set it to null. And if somebody puts an unused pointer that is not null, it's their responsibility Let the program crash. OK? So like this, if I come back, everybody's OK with what I just did? We understand what we did over here? Way back in the distance. <laughs> Are we OK with this? All right. OK, so now that I have done this, I can do even better in my code. So instead of having if initialize yada yada, all these things can just change to just allo copy. Because that is nicely setting everything. And because I'm following the rule of setting the pointer to null, even when it's deleting the pointer, that null thing is not going to do anything, right? So the code becomes cleaner. And when we set the data, we had to delete and set and everything, so we don't need to do that anymore. Allocate and copy will do it. And as you see, the code becomes cleaner and cleaner by creating a nice library function for ourselves to do our work. Uh, we did this manually. We didn't do anything with it, so we just let it. I don't know if we can reuse the thing. I'm not going to go into that. So we are down to this point. So now we have uh, uh, a class that can set itself to values. It can concatenate values to itself. We can add the capabilities to compare the two. There's no problem with that. We're going to do that too. No problem. In two seconds. But for now, my concern is that my print can only print and see out. That sucks. I don't want that. I want the print to be able to print on anything, not just see out. But I want to keep it the same way, which means when they call the print, it just prints and see out. When you're printing, it's see out. If you don't want to print and see out, you have to provide another object. It's an easy thing to do. It's an easy thing to fix. What I can do in here, in my print, I can say, I'm going to pass an O stream to this to print on. Let's call it OSDR. And by default, I will set that reference to C out. So if you don't mention anything, 
by default, O stream will be the new name for CL, right? Now I'm going to go to my print and comfortably say O stream reference OSDR, knowing the fact that OSDR by default will be C out and instead use OSDR in here. So the programmer who's using I program will not care. They're just going to say print. Because they didn't provide what to print on, it will be C out. But if they decide to print this on C log, they can. Well, I simply say C log over here, which means now the default value will be overwritten and OSDR becomes a new name for C log. So John Doe over there is going to get printed on C log. Are we good with this? And we can have something like this. Right? All the same. So I can print on three different objects and it would work perfectly. Are we okay with this? That's one more feature that we added to our string. And you will see that after going through all these things, with 15 minutes to half an hour of lecture, I'm going to make this transform to something beautiful. Okay? That's going to be the, the, our lecture day, not today. Um, yeah, so the next thing we want to do, I want to be able to actually attach one string to another. This is just literal values or, va or C strings. I want to eliminate the use of strings. I don't want to use them. I want to, so, so saving this as the first tester. So let me run it, make sure everything is good. We didn't break anything by, whoa, we break 5,000 things. OK, let's see, what did we break? Oh, STD, because we are in a header file, right? This is sometimes just one little thing breaks, <laughs> and that's that. So, so now you see when you go bananas in the things, usually the reason is that just do. anyways. So now let's save this. I'm going to save this as uh, a uh, SDR tester dot CPP. That's the first one. Now let's open up the PRG dot C and see what I want to do. What I want to be able to do is this. I want to be able to say. I want to be able to say this. I want to be able to say SDR name Fred, SDR surname Soleil, and I want to be able to say name.cat, for example. Uh, space, then dot cat, surname, dot print, new line. I want to be able to say this. We know the first one is accommodated. We have done that. It concatenates a space after Fred. Beautiful. Okay? But then I want to be able to actually add the surname to this. We didn't do that. Right? How do we do it? It's actually quite simple. There's no, uh, it's, it's, not an, it's not a very difficult implementation. So for both of these two, for set and cat, I'm going to create new instances. And that's a constant SDR reference, SDR, and SDR reference, SDR. So I'm going to say, I'm going to set and cat not only to character data, but now to the strings, to other strings. So how do I accomplish that? It takes exactly three seconds to do it. 
because it's SDR, it has access to all properties of SDR, right? So all I need to do is to say set SDR.mData. Done. And then obviously at the end return this. Because the code is already done in the other one, right? And everything is safely set. We designed it so when we create it, it's null. If it's not null, it's going to have value. So everything is safe with that M data. I just say, set yourself to the data of that one. And now if I actually add the other one, it's going to have the exact same effect. So to, to concatenate, I can literally say cat SDRM data and return this. So what I want to tell you is that adding features to a class to accommodate everything you need, usually it's not creating new things. It's reusing your code properly. It just took three seconds to do this, right? So I'll save this. And now I'm going to come back over here and see uh, what I did actually worked. And when I run the program, I will have Fred Soleil over there. And that's what the name is going to be. And I can actually afterwards print the name, and you'll see everything is concatenated to the name. So I'll go name.print. Uh, and it does it that way. Right? Are we OK down to this point? Are we OK? Are we OK? All right. So now that we have done this, let me show you something that's going to kind of freak you out. It is not time to teach it, but I want to tell you. Actually, oh, one more thing, one more thing. We want to be able to read the name, right? We want to be able to get the name from outside, right? So we need to read too. And the read is always the same thing as write. So remember, you see, by the way, you see the signature? Imprint it in your brains. This is the proper signature of a display for OStream for all objects who wants to get printed on OStream. You, sh you need to, when I tell you this object is printable on O or displayable on O stream. With your eyes closed, you should poof, write this. Okay? It's standard. And what you see over here, which is essentially returning O stream, display, pass an O stream, defaulted to C out. And it's constant because it's not changing the owner. Done. Are we good? All right. And if I wanted to tell you that I want to be able to read the string from the outside, what do I do? I'm going to say std. It's exactly the same thing. I stream reference read std. I stream reference isdr set to std c in. Obviously, it's not constant because it's changing the thing. It's exactly the same way. And you read it the exactly. Uh, exactly the same way. So in here, if I actually go and create the definition for this, uh, obvious, I think I had something in, we had something in utils that read the thing dynamically, right? Uh, SDR copy. We didn't have anything in here. <clears throat> no, not out of copy. To read something from, we had yes. So we had yes, we had, there we go, get C string. This get C string is doing get line, and didn't we have a dynamic one for that? Oh, what a shame. So let's do that. So we created the get string or get C string, right? We created the get C string, correct? With the get C string, we are getting a, a string uh, to the length that we want, and it looks okay to me, up to a certain length. What if I want to have this dynamically? 
what if I want people to enter information into the string uh, on the console and I don't know what the size is? How do I do that? Okay, so I'm going to create another get string. I'm, I can swear that we did this. In, maybe it was in NAA. I don't know. So that, ladies and gents, will be this. To not know what is the size of what I'm getting, I need to have void gets, get C string and character pointer reference SDR because I have to dynamically read and copy it into SDR. That's what I have to do. It's reading and dynamically giving me the, the information back. And I can um, do it two different ways. I can do that and, and return it too at the same time. Nah, forget it. I'm not going to make it complicated. So in here, if I go, uh, and remember what I was telling you about uh, don't return void. So all these voids could have been returning the utils. You could have it as this. It, it's a nice thing to do it. But anyways, so that's that. So in here, I'm going uh, to implement this. Uh, and later, we're going to make it even better. So what is the biggest size that you think somebody can enter something on the console? 1,000? Let's make it 4,000. OK? So actually, let's actually do this. But we're going to remove that. You're going to remove that as a challenge. I'll tell you later how, but how to do it, and you're going to do it as a challenge. So this get string of mine is supposed to get string from console, right? Get C string, and it's dynamic. So first thing I'm going to do over here, what is that constant pi thing you're doing over? Oh, I gave an example somewhere. <laughs> anyway, so in here I'm going to say constant uh, size. T um, uh, max dynamic read, and I'm going to set it to 4096. Okay, that's 4K. All right, so it's going to be 4K. That U means it's unsigned. That U means this is an unsigned integer, just letting the compiler know so it doesn't have to cast it. So now I'll come to that get C string. We can change that later on to whatever we want. But in here, I'm going to say character buffer. And in here, I'm going to say max dynamic read. OK, so that's maximum dynamic read that I can do. and now that I have the max dynamic read, I'm going to use the get C string for it. So I'm going to say get C string into, no, I can't do that, can I? I think I can. Buff, yes. Buff. And then in here, uh, for the length, I'm going to put uh, max dynamic read. OK? So what happens with this is that. So it's going to say reach. So it, this is not going to let go until they enter something less than this, right? And it's from C in. That's a huge failure, but we'll, we'll fix that later, OK? You know what? I'm not going to use that, and I'll let you know why. Give me two seconds, OK? So I'm not going to use it. I'm going to use its uh, code only. I'll tell you why. Uh, you'll see why soon. So I'll use the exact same met method that I used over there, which is essentially this one. And in here, it's going to be getting the line. So this one gets the line up to max read. No problem with that. Then I'm going to say if. C in, oh, if C in was successful, not fail, okay? Then what I'm going to do in here, I'm going to uh, say, uh, I'm going to say str will be equal to new character 
utsdr len of the buff, whatever it read, plus one, and uh, sut.sdr copy into sdr the whatever I have in buffer. Okay? And, and it's a good idea because I'm overwriting, I'm going to follow the exact same rule, which means I'm going to delete the SDR and I'm going to set SDR to null pointer. Did I do something wrong? Oh, yes, 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 thank you. My apologies. Okay, so yeah, so yeah. So I, I put a maximum size that I can read, and as you see, it's not user interactive anymore. Because I'm following, the, because this is going to be from anything, not only CN. I have to change that because read is supposed to read from any I stream. And you will see that we have many later on. So, it's not some, sometimes it's not interactive, you will see. So it's a good idea to follow the standards of CIN, which means if they try to read and it failed, they can always check afterwards. They can do a get. So to make this work even better, I'll follow it like this. I'm going to say not for print, uh, not for specific length, but in here, I'm going to actually say STD OS iStream. What? I stream, oh, I did not include I stream in here, did I? So in here I'm going to say include I stream reference ISDR set to STD C in. So if they don't mention it, it's C in. It's the exact same way that I did it for the other one. And in utils, I'm going to add that one. I'm going to say uh, I stream uh, uh, reference ISDR. And I'm going to use ISDR instead of CN. It's the new name for whatever comes in. ISDR and ISDR. So if it cannot read it, whatever the stream is that is coming in is going to fail. And they can detect it afterwards. So they create the buffer. They delete the, uh, the string that is supposed to be read. It set it to null pointer. Then it does a get line and things like that. Now, and for this, we can do good stuff. Like we can actually do things like, uh, return a boolean in here too, and say uh, return uh, str being not equal to null ptr. So they can actually test and make sure everything is good. You follow what I'm saying? So they can actually run the program and they can test it even with the with the return value of this to see if it was successful or not. If, if, if it fails, it returns. Uh, if it cannot allocate, obviously it's going to set uh, ISDR to false, but it's going to return null to, uh, return false to. And if it's not null, it returns. So, so that thing, this receives a dynamic memory for me. Now I can go back to my string, and in my string, I can simply say, uh, uh, what do I say? I will say uh, ut dot uh, get c string, and in here I'm going to say into m data and uh, isdr, and return this. That get string will take care of everything, right? Oh no, return not this isdr. What am I doing? Isdr, right? So now the read calls that one for m data, sets it to null, and deletes it, sets it to null, tries to get it to maximum read length, and now my string can dynamically get information from the, yeah. Why can't you do the here thing to the get string? Which this was? Why didn't I uh, uh, make, it, make it foolproof? Yeah. Why didn't I make it foolproof? I'm going to give you the answer. Get ready for it. OK. So in the hierarchy of 
in the hierarchy of uh, objects that read and write, this was I.O. stream, right? From I.O. stream, we had two, O stream and I stream, okay? So this is I.O.S. This is I stream. Actually, I stream. This is O stream, right? And we know for a fact that what happened? It died on me. Okay. Um, Oh, huh, he doesn't want to write anymore. One more time. So we have this, we have this, we have this. And we said we have, he doesn't want to write. Huh. Writing capability is gone. So please. Remember, this is iOS. It doesn't write for some reason. I don't know why. This is O stream. This is I stream. Okay? Now we have, this really sucks. Why it doesn't write? Let me pause. So uh, but now we have two more things that in here that we do not know about. One over here. Actually, three things. Okay? So we said that I stream is child of iOS, O stream is child of iOS, right? Anything that O stream can do, I stream and O stream can do. That's where iOS fixed, iOS left and right and all the good stuff came from, right? Now, I stream and O stream's job is to read and write, correct? And then redirect, they redirect their input and output from a console, so I stream becomes C in, right? So essentially, Essentially, this I stream, this becomes C in, right? And this becomes C out, correct? I cannot write over there. I have to write it in a bit. Okay? So, and then, if you're going to come over here, this object is not called it. This class, let me actually come down here. This class is called if stream and this seriously if stream and this one is called of stream and these two guys got married and created f stream okay um, this is actually not actually c out this is more than C out. This is C out, C log, and C error, correct? But what is the instance? What is IF stream and OF stream? IF stream is an I stream that can read from files. OF stream is an O stream that can read from files. And because unlike iStream and OStream that they are unique things, files can be many. Because of that, these actually have constructors. And what do you pass to a constructor of a file? File name. Right? So if you create an instance of this and put a file name, it works exactly like screen but in a file. So all the things that you learned, left justified, right justified, print, read, anything you did with iStream and OStream, with C in and C out, works with these. And sometimes you want to read and write from the same file. That's why they put them together. Now with this one, you can read and write at the same time. This is OP345. These two is what next week's that we have. But I'm going to teach it now because you asked for it. So the reason that I keep passing iStream is that you can call me Mr. Solimandu, right? Why? Because it's my last name, correct? It is my family name. It's where I come from. You can call an IF, if stream using I stream because I stream, IF stream is an I stream. 
so you can call it with its parent's name. The same thing with OF stream. Because I created O stream, you can call an OF stream O stream. So if you create a file, you can still use the exact same function to read and write in a file. And that's called 2% comes for the midterm. That's one of the side effects of what? No. Uh, inheritance. Who said inheritance? You and you do too. So. That's, that's marvels of inheritance and polymorphism inheritance. So you, all of you three got the 2%. Okay? So, so that's what I'm saying. So because of inheritance, all the children know how their parents work and they apply it to their own target. So this polymorphism, the fact that print can work with even a file, that's ult ultimate polymorphism. You don't even write a new function, and it knows how to deal with it. I get, I get goosebumps when I say that. Okay, And the fact that the children can use it in inheritance, that becomes the inheritance part of the story. So just to show you what I mean, it, and the reason now we go back, you asked me, why didn't I make it foolproof? If it's from a file, there is no user to whom you want to say you entered something wrong. If you are reading from a file, if the file reading fails, all you need to do is to stop and say, file is corrupted, fix it. And whoever created the file has to go fix their file. Because in files, life is beautiful. You give a format, they have to put that format. If you can't read, it means they screwed up. Right? Oh, you don't need to go through it and try to fix the problem. With files, you simply say, hey, you suck. Go fix your board thing. I asked you to create this format, and you give me garbage. Done. OK? That's what we got. So again, you, uh, you ask for it, then I'm going to say it. I'm going to do it. So let's clear all this. And now I have to. <laughs> <laughs> clear these. Uh, let me, uh, I hope Control Z can do it for me. Oh, not that Control Z. Uh, clear on. I don't want to draw anymore. Okay. Oh. So now, my read is working, so in here I can actually come in, the, in my program. Where is my program? Where is my program? Test the uh, PRG. So in PRG.CPP, I can actually say, I can do it something like this. Right? Then I can say, see out, what is your name? Now I can say name.read, and I don't need to mention anything because by default it goes to C in, right? And then I can say C out, what is your last name? Oh, we don't need endo. And we go surname dot read. And then we can say hello. Name dot cat dot surname dot print, whatever. Right? So, so if I run the program now. Hopefully, if I don't have any problems, I may have. Hopefully, it's going to crash so we can see something. These things don't happen like you write the code and it works. OK, so it's like not even for me after 30 years of programming. So it happens if, if we are extremely lucky if it works. So in here, hello, I am Homer. My last name is Simpson, uh, J Simpson, just to Simpson, just to show you that we are doing get len, okay? And when I hit enter, there you go. Uh, hello, Homer J. Simpson. I actually get it from that. 
Well, this is the beautiful part about it. Take a look. OF stream file homer dot txt. Okay? Take a look at this. No, that end L doesn't work. Will it work? Yeah, it will work. Oh, I have to include F stream because uh, F stream is where it has everything. Okay, so take a look at this now. I'll run it. Homer Simpson. Oh, J Simpson, J Simpson, and hit enter. But the difference is now, when I open this, I'm going to have a file called Homer. And when I open that, there is Homer J Simpson. Done. Now you know how to work with files. When you, that's the beauty of object orientation. When you learn to drive a car, it doesn't matter what type of a car. They give you a car, you drive it. I don't have to teach you. It's a BMW. No, now it's a Buick. Now it's a Chevrolet. No, you don't do that. You learn how to drive a car, and then all cars inherit the same properties. They might be a little different, but the difference is, that, is uh, something that doesn't interfere with your driving. Are we okay with this? And I can do the exact same thing with reading now. So if I want to actually read, I can actually read line by line from the thing, from uh, uh, so the, another thing that we had to add to that thing and we did not, I'm a bad person, to that uh, utils that we have is that not always you want to stop at, not always you want to stop at, uh, stop at new line. You want to go up to a delimiter. You want to read comma separated values. If you want to do something like that, it's as easy as uh, creating something like, uh, where is it? So in here, uh, I have two choices. I can add a delimiter, but then, then so let's make it like this. If I'm adding a delimiter, C in must be, the I stream must be provided. If I don't mention the delimiter, then it could be. Let's do it that way. So. I'm not going to put the second argument as default. I'm just going to do it like this. So this one is not going to be defaulted to C in. They have to provide it. OK? And in here, I'm going to say, what am I going to say? I'm going to say uh, character delimiter. So, And I'm not going to set it to anything. So if anybody uses it like this, they have to put a delimiter for this. Um, and creating this is very simple and straightforward. I already have the code for it. Um, I can't reuse my code. I don't like it. It has to be run, uh, written in the, in the other way. So I'm going to take this over here and put that one over here. So it works the exact same way. The only difference is that in here, I'm doing delimiter, right? That's the only difference between these two codes, correct? So it only receives a delimiter. Now I can reuse this function in that one. And now in here, I can actually say return get C string with str, isdr, and no line, right? Because that this is the this is the more specialized and this is the more, so this is the manual one and that's if you want to just get a C string. So now that I have this, I can come back to my read. Where is my read? In C string, and I can say. And I can say. K 
character delimiter and I set it to new line like that and I add this to the read. I'm just coming up with it as I'm talking and if you go look at the previous semesters, each semester is different. I just come up with it, right? And in here I'm going to put a delimiter. So now if I just call the read, it's going to read it from a from a thing. If I just call, uh, if I uh, provide the uh, where I want to read it from, then the limiter becomes optional. So everything works just fine. Now, if I come to my main, the read will work because it's reading from standard input. But now I can actually do this. What I can do, remember that. So I can actually create something like this. I can create a file. Add new item. I'm going to call it name.txt. And in here, I'm going to say Homer uh, Simpson, J. J. Simpson. And then go Lisa Simpson. OK, so I have two records in here. So, and I'm going to save this. Uh, I'm going to call it B um, SDR test again dot CPP and create a new one. And in here, um, I'm going to have a name and a surname, and it's here. I'm going to have an IF stream file called name.txt. In here, I'm going to say read from file, read up to comma from file, right? And then read up to new line from file. And then I'm going to say cat, the two. Now I'm going to say print. Oh, right? So now it's going to read the first name. So let's walk through it and see what happens just to see what, what we are dealing with over here now. I'm going to put this at left and put this one at right. And I have the name TXT visible. So it's Homer J. Simpson, right? So it comes in, reads, and it wants to read the file up to comma. So it comes over here, goes to read. In read calls the get string dynamically, creates the buff, deletes the string, and gets the line into buffer up to comma and eats the comma. So as soon as it reads, the buff will have Homer in it because it's reading from the file, right? It's reading Homer up to comma and stops. And then after that, it creates new uh, buff to the size of that one, SDR copies and get out and returns I stream and comes back here. Now it reads the surname. If you recall the last time it read it, not here, the last time it read it right up to here, correct? That's what we're going to cause, have problem. It's going to read the space after. <laughs> okay, so we are got to see that we are going to have an extra space, but it's okay well, because they didn't provide the file properly. Comma separator is not supposed to have space on that, <laughs> right? So, so we're going to come over here, and we're going to read that one too, and we'll say hello, and it cats it, and I'll get ho hello, hello. How many hellos do I have? Hello, hello, emergency. Okay, and the good thing is that I can actually, let me take the hello out over here. I can actually do this. I can say uh, while not done. And I can create over here boolean done is false. And here I can read. And if you recall, our read actually returns a boolean, right? The read returns, does it return a boolean? 
No, it doesn't return. It returns a scene. Anyway, so in here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to read that, read these two, okay? After I read these two, I'm going to say if uh, file, because file is CN, it works exactly like CN. You can say not fail. Everything that works in CN, it works here. I can say while not the, the fail, while it, while it didn't fail, say hello, right? And in here, I don't need a, sorry, I don't need this flag anymore. I can simply say file. So while file is OK, do it. And at the end, I'm going to say file the clear. It. Oh, you see there's a close over there too, right? <laughs> you don't need to close the files in, in, unlike what you did in C language. In C language, you had to close the file when you were done, right? In here, objects have a destructor. What is a natural thing to do uh, in a destructor of a file? Close the file. So if you don't do anything, the destructor will close the file. Don't worry. If you want to close it, be my guest. Call the close function of the car. But you don't need to, OK? So now, if I actually run the code, it's going to keep reading until it fails and stops. So I have both of them pre-printed. Hello this and hello that. Obviously, I have to ask them to fix the data in here while you are putting extra space. You're not supposed to. And now when I run the program, it actually runs it properly. You see, I told you in half an hour I'm going to teach you the whole file thinking. Done. It, it, with object orientation, it's easy to teach because we build up everything. And that's why the beginning of the semester is very difficult. I have to first teach you what object oriented is. So when the time comes, I'm just going to say, remember those features? Ta-da. And it works, right? So that's that. So these are the things that we learned today. And uh, the next day, you are we are a little mishmash up and down. Like if you go, I think file is on week six or something. And so the next day you are coming in, we're going to change all this to operators. And you will see that you don't have any dot prints and stuff. You literally work with your, literally, you work with your uh, object as if you are printing and reading an integer. OK, we're going to get to that. Um, any questions? Suggestions? Objections? He's laughing for some unknown reason. Are we good? Are we good one? Are we good two? Yeah, so um, I'm going to um, push it right now to the repository. So PRG, the last PRG is the good, is the, what we have done. Um, and I'm going to give you like 10 minutes break. So you can do all the things that I ask you to do. I'm going to run it up. Give me two seconds. Let me just uh, um, go to here and commit. Uh, DMA, uh, I'm going to put 08 February 2nd. So, yeah, we, but because of the, again, uh, the, the class is an extremely dynamic thing. So because of questions that pop up in classes, this class is not completely out of sync with the other one. The other classes, they don't know what a file is. They don't know all, they don't know all these things that we have done in here, okay? Questions come up, and they, 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 that's how we go f further ahead, okay? So, uh, I'm going to put these things up. I want to ask you for a huge, huge favor. And I'm going to let it record so you can you hear it again. <clears throat> the only way you can learn how all these things is to open up my code when you go home. Take a look at it, understand it, set it aside, do everything from scratch by yourself. And as if, and, and don't look at my code, just do it and change it if you find it better to be that way. When you're doing it, if halfway through you see, no, I can't do it, I need help. You save your code completely, close it, set it aside, open my code again, 
again go through it without touching that one. Try to understand what's going on, close it, reopen yours, go through it, and finalize it. You do this, I guarantee you pass this subject with A+. Plus. See, that's my guarantee. That's my promise. If you study the way I told you, you will get A plus in this subject. Other than that, uh, it your, you may get still an A plus because you know how to study in your own style. But if you don't know how to study programming, that's how you do it. Every single note that I post, open it up, understand it, close it, then try to clone it by yourself. Write the exact same code from your memory. And that's when your logic has to kick in. OK? All right. 10 minutes break while I prepare your quiz. And make sure that you log into your computers, Microsoft Edge, school. And you have to do everything on Microsoft Edge. OK? And after you log in, the cell phone's on the table. OK? Because I'm going to collect it. You know that, right? OK. Now.